All right, section 8.6. In 8.6, we're going to test a claim about a standard deviation or a variance. If you remember in section 8.3, we were testing claims about proportions. 8.4 and 8.5 is when we did our hypothesis testing um, to test claims about a mean, whether we knew our population standard deviation or we didn't know our population standard deviation. And then finally, to wrap up chapter 8, we're going to be testing a claim about a standard deviation or a variance. Some notations that we're going to need to know, and there's not as many as there were in the previous sections, but in this section we're going to need to know what n is, and again that is always our sample size. We need to know what s is, Remember, S was our sample standard deviation. Uh, S squared, if we're going to work with variance, is our sample variance. We also need to know, or are testing, our population standard deviation and or our population variance. And then finally our test statistic that we're going to use in testing a claim about a standard deviation is going to be chi-squared. So we're going to be using a chi-squared distribution and our chi-squared formula was n minus 1. Remember if n is our sample size then n minus 1, we said, was our degrees of freedom. So in the formula where we say n minus 1, we can also think about that as the degrees of freedom. So it's n minus 1 times our sample variance, or our sample standard deviation squared, over our population variance, or our population standard deviation squared. So this formula here is going to be what we're going to use to find our test statistic. And then based on our test statistic, we are going to then find a p-value, since we're using the p-value method, and we're going to use our chi-squared distribution. It's table A4. However, we're going to show how to use technology, especially with the chi-squared distribution, to find our p-value, and we'll show that later on as we get going through an example or two. There are two requirements that we have to think about when doing this, when, when using this method to test a claim, and the requirements are, one, that it comes from, that our sample comes from a simple random sample, and two, and this one's important for this one, probably more so than the others, the population has a normal distribution. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of examples out of our textbook on how we're going to test this claim. Uh, how we write the claim, how we test the claim, and then how we can use the chi-squared distribution to find a p-value, and how we can use technology to help us with that. So let's take a look at a sample problem. A simple random sample of 40 men results in a standard deviation of 11.3 beats per minute. The normal range of pulse rates of adults is typically given as 60 to 100 beats per minute. If we use the range rule of thumb, and apply that to the normal range, the result is a standard deviation of 10 beats per minute. Use the sample results with a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that pulse rates of men have a standard deviation greater than 10 beats per minute. Now let's fill out what we know here. I know that my n value, my sample size, is going to be 40. I also know that the standard deviation of the sample is 11.3, so that's going to be S. I'm looking for 
a significance level and I find 0 0.05. And now the only thing I don't have is the population standard deviation, but that's going to be a part of my claim. My claim is going to be that the population standard deviation is greater than 10 beats per minute. So my claim is that population standard deviation is greater than 10. So I use that to write my null and my alternative hypotheses. Since we have a greater than sign, that is going to be a part of my alternative hypotheses. My null hypothesis is going to be that the population standard deviation is equal to 10, or less than or equal to 10. But we've been using the phrase equals 10. So I have everything I need except for my test statistic. And my test statistic, remember, is the formula n minus 1 times s squared over population standard deviation squared, or population variance. So if I plug numbers into the formula, n minus 1 is 39. That's my degrees of freedom. Take it times s squared and divide it by, we're going to use 10 squared. And when we punch that in our calculator, we come out with a test statistic of 49.79. Nine. All right, so we need, to under, we need to figure out, is this a right-tailed test, left-tailed test, or two-tailed test? And since our alternative hypothesis is written as greater than, we know that we are going to use a right-tailed test. And here's where this is a little bit different. If you remember back to Chapter 7, when we used the chi-squared distribution, the numbers we get out of the table in a chi-squared distribution give us the area to the right, where in normal and in t-distributions it gives us the area left. So since we're looking for a right-tailed test here, we are just going to find the area to the right of 49.799. There's our test statistic. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to use technology to help us with that. To do this, we're going to use the website graphpad.com. They have several quick calculators. They have a p-value calculator that we haven't used before because we've been using our tables, getting used to uh, looking up those values in the charts. But for the chi-squared, it's a little different. I'm going to let you use technology for this one. So in our p-value calculator, you can see that there's an area on here where we can find the p-value from a chi-squared value. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter into these fields the chi-squared value, which, if I can get this to work, the chi-squared value on this was 49.799. And the degrees of freedom in this problem, since our sample size was 40, our degrees of freedom is going to be 39, and we'll just compute a value of p. And it tells me my p-value is right there, 0.1152. So my p-value is 0.1152. And I'm going to compare that p-value with my significance level, which was 0 0.005. So I'm going to compare 0.1152 with 0 0.05, and I find that my p-value is greater than my significance level. So what do we say when the p-value is greater? We say if it's high, then let it fly. And letting it fly means that we are going to keep the null hypothesis, or in other words, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if we fail to reject the null, we would then say that there is um, not sufficient evidence to support the alternative 
hypothesis. So there's not sufficient evidence to support our claim that the pulse rates of men have a standard deviation greater than 10. The next example we're going to go through is just a little different. A simple random sample of 25 filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes is obtained and the tar content of each cigarette is measured. The sample has a standard deviation of 3.07 milligrams. Use a significance level of 0.05 to test the claim that the tar content of filtered cigarettes has a standard deviation different from the 3.2 milligrams, which is the standard deviation for unfiltered king size cigarettes. Okay, a lot of wording in there. Let's pull out what we know. We know our sample size is 25. We know our sample standard deviation is 3.7. We know our significance level we're going to test is 0.05. Let's get our claim. Our claim is that the tar content of filtered cigarettes has a standard deviation different from 3.2. So our claim is that the population standard deviation is different than 3.2. And that is going to be our alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis then is going to be that our population standard deviation is equal to 3.2. Time to find our test statistic. Again, our test statistic is a chi-squared value. And our chi-squared value is going to be n minus 1 times s squared all over our population standard deviation squared, which I'll try and go ahead and put in there. It is from our claim 3.2. Let me cross that out and go 3.2 squared. And if we do the math, punch in our calculator, our test statistic comes out to be 32.09. Now here's where this one's just a little bit different in that our alternative hypothesis right here is that our population standard devi deviation does not equal 3.2. That means we will have a two-tailed test. And the good thing with the p-value method is that's really not going to change anything for us in that we know when we find the p-value from our test statistic, we're just going to double it and then compare that against our alpha or our significance level. Okay, so we're going to go back to our calculator. I'm going to bring that up. And we are going to do a p-value calculation from chi-squared. In this case, our chi-squared was 32.09. Our degrees of freedom, since our sample size was 24, our degrees of freedom is 24. So let's compute our p-value. And our p-value ends up being 0.1248. And I'm trying to write white on white. There we go, 0.1248. So let's try and move uh, try and move around the browser. Okay, we'll slide that down. And I'll slide it down some more. So 0.1248, remember that was our p value. 0.1248. And since it is a two-tailed test, we are going to double that. So the p value we are going to use is 0.2496. So we're going to compare our 0.2496 with our significance level of 0.05. And we can see if we compare those two that we can say our p-value is greater. So if it's high, let it fly. We are going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. And remember, our null hypothesis was that our population standard deviation was equal to 3.2. So we're going to fail to reject that, which is going to mean then 
that there is not sufficient evidence to support our claim. And our claim, again in the problem, was that the tar content of filtered cigarettes has a standard deviation that's different from 3.2. So just a quick recap of what we did in this section. We are testing a claim about a standard deviation or variance in this section. Again, we did proportions in 8.3, means in 8.4 and 8.5, and in this section, we're testing a claim about a standard deviation or variance. Our test statistic is a chi-squared value in this section. And remember, our chi-squared value, our formula was our degrees of freedom, n minus 1, times our sample standard deviation squared over our population standard deviation squared. And then finally, we use technology. We use the website graphpad.com slash quitcalcs slash p-value 1. In order to find the p-values, given the chi-squared value, our test statistic, and our degrees of freedom. Once we found the p-value, then we have the same rules uh, in comparing the p-value to the significance level.